Welcome to another episode of Real Women, where we talk about the real issues facing modern day Catholic women and how we can make this journey with grace and purpose. My name is Von Hosking. And I'm Karen Doyle, and you are watching Real Women. Fear is such a powerful force that really has the capacity to rob us of our joy and our potential in life. Scripture tells us that the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. And one of the ways in which the enemy seeks to do this is through the force and the very powerful force of fear. If the enemy can get us to doubt ourselves, to doubt the goodness of God and the gifts that he has given us, then he can keep us contained and prevent us from stepping into the fullness of who God has created us to be. Fear of not measuring up can lead to faithlessness and disbelief. If we don't know who we are in Christ, we can lose sight of who we are and get lost in this fear and the comparison trap. Absolutely, and I think one of the biggest traps for women is they measure their gifts and their value and their worth against that of other women. Like Peter walking on water, when we take our eyes off Christ and we start to compare ourselves to others, we sink. And the Lord is inviting us into a deeper relationship with Him where we receive our identity and then we receive the gifts and the mission that He has given to us. To help us unpack this topic further, we're going to be speaking with a woman who has conquered fear in her life and has been able to step into her God-given talents and mission. Welcome, Alyssa Aidu. Alyssa loves to sing. After establishing a top 40 cover act with her husband Daniel straight out of high school, Alyssa has been working as a full-time musician. Her Catholic faith is the most important part of her life and she has been blessed to have been able to combine her love of music and her faith by singing at events and pilgrimages all over the world. After joining the Catholic Influencers podcast as a co-host in 2020, she joined the FRG ministry team in 2021 and heads the podcasts and courses department. Alyssa, we can't wait to unpack this topic with you today. Me too. I'm really just so pumped to be here. You guys are amazing, incredible Catholic women and... Yeah. Uh, it's just good. So wonderful. good to be in your presence. So, <laughs> yeah, good. so good. we feel the same. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we're really looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Now, tell us a bit about your background, but particularly um, how your first experiences of fear in your life. I love music and I love my faith. So a bit of background to those two areas of my life. I guess in terms of music, um, I remember when I was five years old at school in prep, the teacher said, Alyssa, you're off to do your very first piano lesson. And so my parents enrolled me in piano, studied that for a few years. And then after that, I really developed a love of singing. So I joined the school choirs. I was that typical co-curricular kid who just Into got everything. involved in <laughs> everything. Things. That very typical high achiever. I just loved getting involved in everything and doing well at, at everything that I could. Um, and I was so determined to make music my full-time career. I started writing songs when I was in high school. Um, you know, everyone told me I couldn't do it and it made me even more determined to just prove everyone wrong. And so all this, um, there's a lot of hard work and a lot of awesome things falling into place. I was able to, yeah, really make that happen. I met my husband in the process. Um, it was really cool. And so I get to perform now um, at places all around the world, corporate events, um, weddings, functions, um, really fun, very, very blessed. Incredible. But at the same time, I guess faith was something that was really important to me, but it wasn't something that was important um, from the get-go. I was brought up in an Italian Catholic family. So we went to Catholic primary school, secondary school. I did all of the sacraments. I had a huge, huge party for my communion confirmation. But my family never really went to church. Mm. Um, we perhaps went Christmas and Easter sometimes. I always believed in God. I loved learning about God at school. Um, and then I was able to travel to World Youth Day when I was in year 12. And then again, when I was 21, I went to World Youth Day in Madrid. And I think it was there that I really made the decision that I wanted to take my faith a lot more seriously. Um, so I came back and I, I learned as much as I could, um, but I didn't tell anyone about it. So I kept, music and faith 
just on two separate sides of the spectrum of my life. Um, and when I look back at, at that time, I realised what was at the root of that was when fear first started to show up in my life. I, it was, I had such a huge fear of what others would think of me that I just couldn't tell anyone that I was into the faith. <laughs> I couldn't tell anyone in the music industry that I was into the faith and I yeah. couldn't tell anyone on the faith side of things that I was, you know, doing the music thing because, um, you know, good, good Catholic girls don't sing pop music. I always had this crazy mindset of, of that. So um, that's kind of where it all began. What was the defining moment in your life? Sure. Where you were able to identify that fear? Yeah. You said it's hard to, to know if it is even fear, to identify and, and overcome it. Yeah, so I think I identified it maybe like a couple of years later, but I can tell you when I look back at that moment, the catalyst, I remember I was at a youth festival and I was singing there, it was a Catholic youth festival, and someone interviewed me and they, the first question they asked me was, Alyssa, how do you combine your music and your faith? Wow. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to answer this? <laughs> because. I didn't even realise that I was keeping them separate until this moment. So I'd come back from this festival and I guess because I was working on the weekends a lot, I was able to really invest a lot of time into my faith. I started to go to daily mass, I started to get involved in my parish. Um, and I really just worked on my relationship with God for a really long time. And I guess I didn't feel like anything was happening, but I guess when I look back now, a few years later, I realised that I really had to learn who I was and, and where my worth, my true worth and identity mm. came from. Um, so that was the catalyst for it, definitely, yeah, yeah, that moment. Isn't that funny, coming back to that identity, I know that we spoke about this earlier, that we really do need to find out who we are um, as a beloved daughter of God mm -hmm. before anything else, exactly. you know? Mm -hmm. Because when we know that, then we can, then God can use us. Yeah. Because we, we, we have already identified it. And also fear then doesn't have its hold because we know that it's not about us in the, at the end of the day. We're talking about this issue of fear and just how powerful it is and how it has such a grip on us. But I think fear is actually, like it's a feeling that we feel and it manifests in like, I guess, how we feel in our bodies in terms of anxiety, heart rate, how it keeps us contained. But we often say that a feeling is a belief incarnate. So what's actually going on is we have this feeling of fear but what we don't realise is it's like a symptom, it's like the rug. And what we actually need to do is pick up the rug and have a look at what's under that fear. Like what's actually the thought that's driving, what are the beliefs that are driving the fear? Because if we can come and look at our thoughts and the beliefs, then that's where God really comes in and does His work of transformation. And I think in another episode, we're going to look at being renewed by the transformation of your mind and that we have this incredible capacity to take every thought captive to Christ. So I'm wondering how you were able to do that with fear. Like how were you able to, I guess, address some of the thoughts? What were the thoughts that were driving fear? Well, the big one for me was what other people would think mm. of me. I was just petrified I wouldn't get work in the industry. if People knew that I had a faith. I was petrified people in the, um, faith community would question the authenticity of my faith because I was so involved in such a secular part of the world. But really, I think uh, the way that I kind of overcame that fear, I'm really big on like dates and I don't believe in coincidences and I feel like mm. God really speaks to me like orchestrating things perfectly. I had the opportunity to write a song for this particular event and everything just fell into place perfectly and I had I just really felt in my heart God saying, Alyssa, you need to step out of the boat here. You need to trust me and you need to let the Holy Spirit really step in here. You need to release this song. And again, you said before, when it doesn't become about you, when it was about what God wanted you to do, um, I was really able to do that. And I didn't do it alone either. I did it with someone else. And so I kind of felt like if I was to fail, at least I would, wouldn't be failing alone. <laughs> On I'd your be head. failing <laughs> with other people. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, and from that moment and, and how that whole situation was received. Yes. I just, again, just grew in confidence. Mm. I know many women watching this would, would connect a lot of their fear to um, comparison of others, especially the comparison of women mm. in their lives. Um, I'm sure that in music industry especially, there would be a lot of comparing um, and um, comparing yourselves to others in, on the same journey. Can you talk us through um, how, the, you know, the comparison in the comparison trap has shown up um, in your, both your faith and your music journey? Yeah, sure. I guess so. It's very prevalent in the music industry for sure. Um, a lot of us 
There's not many women in the music industry, but from the women that I do see and communicate with, everyone kind of says the same thing, that we're always fighting for each other's gigs. There's not many gigs to get. And so it's always like, who's the better singer? Who's the better looking? Who's wearing the best costumes? And it really can get quite exhausting. Um, but like I said before, I released that song and it was really incredible. What I did in that song was I, me and the other person I released the song with, we were really just big on being ourselves. We literally like sang this song in jeans and a t-shirt. And it was actually um, based on the quote from St. Catherine of Siena that says, when you become who you're meant to be, oh, you will set so the world good. on fire. Beautiful. So cool. So powerful. Um, us in jeans and t-shirts, we were just being ourselves, using the unique gifts that God has given so us. Good. And that's a huge thing with the comparison trap, really just, um, again, knowing our identity, um, knowing who we are in God and knowing that God has created each of us with individual and unique gifts that aren't repeated with anyone no. else. Yes. And so when you really step into those gifts, um, well, then it doesn't really matter Absolutely. what anyone else is doing. Yeah, and you can also, I, I my experience is that when you realise, you understand your own gifts, you actually see the beautiful gifts in the Absolutely. others so much more, like and better. And that's a way, yeah. I was even thinking about this too this morning, actually, like, that's a way of glorifying God, yeah. like glorifying the awesome work that God's doing in someone else's life. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I think when you are focused on what everyone else is doing, you really, again, it's another thing where you're missing out on God's plan for your yes. life. Yeah, being captive. And yeah. you also, I think what happens when we get into comparison and when we're rating our gifts or who we are against other women, we breed this competitive spirit. And the competitive spirit tends to bring others down in order to, to yes. elevate ourselves. But what you're saying is, I think one of the ways we can guard against this comparison trap and the competitive kind of spirit that exists in a lot of female mm. relationships is to look at championing yeah, the other, exactly. championing in other's gifts and realising exactly what you said, Alyssa, that what you bring, I can't bring, I cannot sing to save yeah. myself. Yes. I can yeah. dance, but I can't sing. But you know, that gift that you bring. And I think when we actually see someone operating in the height of their gift, it just elevates you towards heaven. Yeah, um, it So it I think does. that championing of each other's gifts is really, really important. Exactly, and then when they see you stepping into your gifts, it kind of gives them permission as Absolutely. well oh, to step into yes. their gifts. It's exactly what happened. I saw this in my own life, just mm. so in, um, in such a powerful way. When I released that song, so many women were messaging me and the other person I released the song with, just saying, it's such a breath of fresh air that you guys were being yourselves. Like I am comparing myself to this person, that person. It's so hard to get a gig in the music industry, but this, this is awesome. And um, this has really taught me that, you know, my gifts are uniquely mine. Like mm. it was just, God was so at work. What would you say to women? I'm interested, just who are really struggling with fear? With that fear of not feeling good enough, with the fear of what will others think, what can they actually do to, I guess, step out and to start to recover? Um, I think a couple of things. I would say, number one, work on your relationship with God first and, and really understand your, your true worth and, and your identity in God. Hang out with people who see your yes. unique gifts as well and who really encourage you, like having a community of women around you who are really championing, championing you in these things is so, so important. And again, if you're on social media and you're finding that you are falling into these traps, maybe set some boundaries with the time that you you spend on social media. Um, as you said before, spend time in scripture as well. Um, there's probably plenty of other tips I'm sure you girls can add to that, yeah. but off the top of my this, head, there's a couple. Yeah, the yeah. scripture one's really important because yes. it's like replacing lies with truth. Yes, exactly. The truth. Because mm. it's so easy, like uh, we have this negative bent, like we're wired to notice what's wrong and what's negative, but to rewrite that with truth and start to be renewed by transforming our minds with yes. truth. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to hear from both of you. For women who find themselves uh, in the space where they are comparing themselves to other women, but particularly when they feel the emotions of jealousy or envy towards another who perhaps is in the same space as them, same industry, you know, they compare their gifts and talents, but they aren't able to initially celebrate them or see their own giftedness. What's something that women can do in the moment when they have these emotions? Um, I was just gonna say, I feel like those um, feelings of jealousy and envy, they come out of a place when it's like, I'm looking at the other person and I look at what they have and I'm upset because I don't have that. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I think firstly, I guess to look inward and say, 
hey, this is what I actually am grateful for. These are the blessings in my life. This is what I'm good at. These are my gifts. Like just acknowledge that and be grateful for those. Um, and then that's, I guess that's looking inward. And then looking outward, just find something this person is doing well um, and really try and gravitate to that. And also just remembering like, you don't know the full story either. Like it might have taken this person like so many years to build up the courage yeah. to step into that gift. And yeah. that's an awesome achievement. I'm sure we can all yeah. ag agree on that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So Alyssa, at the end of each episode, we do this burning question segment where we ask you five top questions and you give us the first response that comes to your mind. Sure. What does living fearlessly mean to you? I think for me, it means stepping into the person that God has created you to be Great. without any hesitation, just going for it. Yeah, yeah. like it. All right, so what is one thing that women can do to overcome fear? I would say really work on your relationship with God. If you work on nurturing that and you really come to a, a really good understanding of your identity in God, any fear that you're facing is gonna fall away. What is one Bible verse that helps you combat fear? My favourite Bible verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So whenever I'm feeling like I can't do anything, that's the go-to and then it never fails. Amen. So women are often each other's biggest critics. We can fall into comparison competition. What's some of the ways that we can overcome this? Yeah, I think um, rather than tearing women down, building women up, really looking for something that they're good at and really championing them and encouraging them in that. What are your top tips for women finding freedom from the comparison trap? Sure, I would say two things. Number one, um, practice gratitude. Be grateful for the gifts um, and awesome blessings that you have in your own life. And then number two, again, knowing your identity in God and knowing that He's given you unique gifts that are unique to you. There's never going to be another you with the same gifts that you have. So when you come to an understanding of that, there's no need for comparison. Yeah. Mm. Alyssa, thank you so much for joining us on the couch today to unpack this quite massive topic of um, finding freedom from fear in the comparison trap. Oh, no worries. It's been a pleasure to chat with you lovely ladies. So Thanks good to for have having you. me. Such an enriching conversation. Fear and the comparison trap can be a lifelong battle for all of us. But when we spend time with Christ and remember who we are in Him, it can bring absolute freedom. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the first things is understanding and receiving our identity and then also receiving our unique gifts and then realising where we're called to offer those in service and contribution. And let us remember the words of St. Catherine of Siena, be who you were created to be and you will set the world on fire. I love that quote. That's a little pearl for you to take away this week as you take to the Lord the role that fear plays in your life and the ways in which He's wanting to bring about restoration in your life. We look forward to seeing you back on the Real Women series next episode. Problems, worries, sadness. Are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear.